A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, what do you think? A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I say to you, tax collectors and harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and harlots believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward repent and believe. There are a lot of reasons uh, not to work for God. Let's look at the gospel and try to understand the motivation of the first son, the one that didn't want to, and he said that to his father. Why would you not want to work for God? I have, I have a lot of reasons to tell you why you would not want to work for God. One, the money is very lousy. Two, it is uncomfortable. It can be physically uncomfortable sometimes to work for God, but it's definitely emotionally uncomfortable to care that much about others without any guarantee that they're going to care about you back. It can be very embarrassing. It can be sometimes shameful in worldly eyes. I think you guys understand this maybe as well as I do, that in a public setting, to say out loud that I am Catholic can be embarrassing, depending on the people that are around you. The responsibility that you take on saying, I would like to work for God's kingdom, that's not just you're going to do some stuff and then that's the end of it. You're taking on a responsibility. And every little inch of responsibility you, you take is one inch less freedom that you have. So if you don't want to work for God, there's a lot of reasons not to do it. And if you want money or comfort or glory or freedom, working for the kingdom of God is not a good idea. There's a lot of reasons to pretend to work for God. Like the second son. The second son didn't say no and didn't go, no. He said to the father, yes, I will go. He was pretending. And when you pretend to work for God, unfortunately, the money is actually quite good, I think. There's a lot of people that make a lot of money selling a product, and that product is the gospel. And when you pretend to work for God, if you manipulate it in the right way, you can get really rich. You can have a very comfortable life if you pretend to work for God. <coughs> because when you have a lot of money, you can have a fancy house, you can relax. It's not a lot of work. Just give an emotional speech once in a while. Say Jesus a couple of times. I don't know. Pretend to get really emotional. And people will just, oh my gosh, open their wallets, give you whatever they want, and then you're done, you can go home and rest. And you can get a lot of glory, because when you pretend to work for God, you can just talk to the people that are going to agree with you. And you can just tell them whatever they want to hear. And again, you just say Jesus a couple times, and they'll love you, and they'll praise you, and they'll say, oh, you're so great, and you're so holy. There's a lot of glory to be had in pretending to work for God. And there's not really any responsibility. Because once you're done tricking the suckers that you're tricking, you can go home and relax 
and you don't have to think about anything else. You're not actually responsible for their souls. That's a pretty drastic contrast. On the one hand, not much money, a lot of discomfort, a lot of shame, and a lot of responsibility bearing the burdens of the people that you care about and that you're taking care of. On the other hand, all the opposites if you just know how to lie in the right way. So you can see why the son that said no, I don't want to work in the vineyard, said no. And you can see why the son that said yes without any intention of actually doing it, said yes. What's the problem with pretending to work for God? When you pretend, you are alone. When you lie, you are isolating yourself from the rest of the human race. Because that means nobody knows you. And if you're alone, I don't know what good money is. If you live by yourself, if you've isolated yourself from all of humanity, that means you don't care about anybody, and it means nobody knows you. Which means there's no way anybody could care about you, because how do you care about somebody you don't know? So that pretending is not off to a good start. When you're comfortable all the time, and all you do, you just kind of avoid anything that's difficult, having those hard conversations, telling people things they don't want to hear. And you just avoid that all the time. Well, yeah, you're, you're comfortable, but you get soft. You become weak. It's like laying in bed all day for year after year after year. Yeah, it sounds fun. And maybe when you're really tired, that sounds great. But what's going to happen to your muscles at the end of that, those years? You're not going to be able to move at all. It's going to hurt you more than it's going to feel good. What about getting compliments and glory based on pretending? Well, you know it's a lie. And yeah, maybe for a second it feels good to, for people to say nice things about you. But you know, you, know, you know very well that the person that they're talking about doesn't exist. And in your heart, there's no joy you can take from that. And to live a life with total freedom, that doesn't exist. There's no such thing. If you live a life with no responsibilities, and responsibilities can be crippling. And if you just avoid, I just don't want any, I don't want to be responsible for anything. I want my freedom. You either have to kill your conscience or you have to live with the guilt knowing that God put you on this earth to get some responsibility. He didn't create you just to do whatever you feel like all the time. God gives us all a job to do. And if you just don't like that idea and you just want to be free for your whole life, some part of you has to be destroyed. And that part of you has to, is going to be your conscience. And man, good luck having happiness after that. So, pretending might look good on the surface, but that second son's end was actually pretty, pretty tragic. Even the end of that day, much less his life if you live a life like that. What do you get out of repenting the way the first son did? So the first son, one thing that I think we can admire from him, even from the start, even before he repented and went, went into the field, he at least was honest. Being honest about being lazy is way better than pretending. At least be honest with yourself. Why? Well, because that allowed him to, to, to repent, to change his mind. It says afterward he changed his mind and he went and worked in the vineyard. What do you get out of that? Well, you go out of the vineyard, you don't get money, but you get some sunshine. You get to be out in the world. That's actually probably a more joyful way to live than sitting by yourself. 
You don't get physical comfort. It's actually quite uncomfortable. But you get some muscles. You get some toughness. You get some strength. And that actually feels pretty good after a while. You don't get glory, but you do get a relationship with the Father. You get the love of God in your heart. And you get other people knowing you for who you are and caring about you. And maybe it's not going to be as many people, but they're going to be real friends. And maybe it's not going to be all compliments, but the compliments that you get are going to be true. And you don't get freedom, but freedom's an illusion anyway. You get citizenship. You get to be a member of the kingdom of God. And being a member of the kingdom of God, and especially being a worker for the kingdom of God, means you lose your absolute freedom and you get a lot of responsibility, but you're part of something larger and you're not by yourself, you're not isolated. Brothers and sisters, you're all here today because you're supposed to be, we're all supposed to be working for the kingdom of God. Some of us, and maybe all of us sometimes, pretend. Put all the pretense aside. Let's be real and let's be together here for real and let's be uh, members and workers for the kingdom of God as we receive the Eucharist, let us receive him with sincerity and with truth so that he can give us the strength to go and spread his kingdom.